Welcome back guys, this is Wedding Advice by Pink Book. I'm Natalie. I'm Melindy. And I know for most brides, as soon as they get engaged, the mm. most important thing on their mind is their wedding dress. It can be very daunting, so this video is great for those brides. Three wedding dress designers takes us through everything from consultation to budget to hiring versus bespoke. Enjoy the video guys, please don't forget to subscribe. Leave your comments down at the bottom, tell us what you'd like to hear and see next. Until next time, Happy planning! When a bride gets engaged, it's very exciting and it can become very overwhelming booking a lot of designers and it can be a costly affair. Brides tend to search on websites and Facebook pages and Instagram, you will get a good idea of what type of gown reflects your personality, but it's always good to book a couple of consultations as soon as possible. There is certain times of the year that is quite busy. September and March is a saturated month when it comes to bridal gowns. So in order for the designer to have enough time to finish your dress and have enough time for fittings, you need to book your dress at least eight months in advance. Once we've looked at a bride's Pinterest and mood board, I can get a feel of what the bride likes. Uh, a bride will show me a couple of pictures, different styles of gowns, but they, they will all say one thing. It will say classic, boho chic, elegant, edgy, weird, different. And that enables me to take gowns out of the workshop or the studio and style them in those specific gowns. We do have brides that doesn't know anything or they don't know what they want or they don't know what suits them. But I ask the right questions to find out what are they all about. So whether it's the job they do, whether it's the color they like, whether it's the honeymoon they're going to have, I will find a way to reflect the bride's personality in the final design. The budget that the bride has available for a wedding gown will affect the type of gown we make. In the 10,000 price bracket, it would be somebody working at home. They can afford that, they've got no overhead, so it's possible. So it's either a young new designer that comes out and she wants to start a business. If the client is lucky, she will get somebody that really, really are into construction and loves the job, what she's doing. And she will then put her heart and her soul in this dress and that will always show. So if she's lucky, there's a lot of people that unfortunately think they are the top dollar, but they, didn't work long enough for somebody else to learn. So they want to get out of college, they want to do their own thing. And I'm guilty, I have been that person. So I've learned over the years, you cannot, you need to work for somebody. You need to absolutely work hard, I would say at least five years, before so you can get to the point of where you can call yourself a designer. Going on to a 20,000 average dress, this is definitely, now you're in the boutique market. So for a 20,000 dress, you can have a designer dress from a designer and you will get a dress in a boutique. 30,000 is still boutique and designers combined. I would say you can have designers making dress for 30,000. If you go up, it starts going more, then it's more towards the 70% designer bracket, 30% boutique. You can go up to 60,000 rand in boutiques, but that's very selective boutiques. And, um, and then, it, then it becomes designer gowns. Then it's bespoke, then the clients order, and then anything from 45 and up is bespoke. Bespoke is when a client comes in and she wants a dress made completely. Nothing like that exists. So maybe it exists, but not for her. So she will like this sleeve, this top, this skirt, this lace. I mean, there is a hundred styles that belong out there and it's already been done but it's the combination of putting everything together that makes it her. And that's how we dress a personality than rather just make a designer dress. It's very important for the client so that the dress matches her. I mean, my favorite saying is, the compliment should not go to the dress, the compliment should go to the bride. I would advise that you consider renting a dress when your budget does not allow for you to have a dress made 
when you rent a dress, you need to um, maybe lower expectations of what is available, um, not only in style, but in size most probably. Um, if you can't find anything that you see in the shops that you love, then having a dress made might be the better option. But it is one of those things where you have to weigh up the pros and cons. Do, is budget more important or is it more important that you get what you are 100% happy with? Can you cut on flowers and stationery and you're willing to spend more money on the dress? Or would you rather spend more on food and drinks and um, you know lawn games to have your guests entertained and um, pay less for your dress? When you look at hiring a dress, um, you might look at a third or a quarter of the cost of having a dress made. Um, as I said before, when you have a dress made, it is quite a few hours of work that goes into that. Um, where with hiring a dress, it's something that's already made. There might be uh, minor adjustments that need to be made, but yeah. The, the, the cost will be much, much less. So I've had the question asked to me before, what do people do with their wedding dresses after they get married? And there are, there are quite a few options. You can resell it on websites. Um, you can resell it on Gumtree if you really want to, but there are websites that specifically cater for secondhand wedding dresses. Um, I've heard of some people that have privately hired out their wedding dresses. Um, some shops might buy it back from you. Um, so some brides have even had christening gowns made for their newborns uh, from pieces of their fabric. Um, but I've also known brides who are just like, quite happy to have it there as a sentimental thing. My favorite though, one of our brides have decided that whenever they have a Sunday bride, she whips out her wedding dress and she's in front of the bride sitting on the stoop with her glass of wine and enjoying the dress. And I love it. I think that's the best use of the wedding dress that you can get afterwards. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, comment down below what you thought and what you would like to see next. And until next time, <laughs> happy, happy planning. planning.